What's up YouTube? I'm Joe. You're watching my channel Ink and Iron and it's time for the easiest video I've ever shot. This is my full review after oh five years uh, of my Leatherman Surge. I absolutely love this multi-tool. I'm going to tell you why it's my favorite and at the end of the video I'd like to just mention briefly a tool that I'm looking forward to receiving this summer from Kickstarter that uh, might actually give this a run for its money. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about that at the end. But uh, let's get started with the Surge review. And let's start with the plier head. So the Leatherman Surge, this is the uh, Generation 2 Surge. Um, the original, uh, the first gen, and um, first gen of like the Wave and the Charge series did not have replaceable cutters. Um, so this one has the replaceable cutter jaws. They added a little bit of reinforcement here to help with the um, lack of metal on the uh, the inside here. Uh, it does come to a needle nose point, and uh, I am amazed at how well aligned these still are after five years because, focus, <laughs> there we go. I think you can see it a little bit. Still pretty well aligned. They are slightly off. Um, I'm surprised they are so barely changed because I have literally gripped onto things and twisted them with the entire amount of strength that I have in my hands and my arms, which is considerable. Like, I can do pull-ups on a, uh, a door jam in like a normal house, so I'm, I'm no slouch. I'm a pretty strong dude for my size, I'm only like 145, um, but yeah, I have literally cranked on things with these and the plier heads have stayed aligned. That being said, it is still a little bit stiff. Um, I didn't lube this for about the first four years that I used it, so that may have something to do with it. I'm also suspicious that the black coated version, this black oxide version, uh, is just a little bit stiffer than the um, uncoated stainless steel version. So if I could go back and do one thing, I would get the stainless steel version as opposed to the black oxide. All right, so the uh, plier heads here are very nice. Um, you can see mine are a little gunked up. I've taken this to work a couple of times. Didn't really clean it off. It's not looking too shabby. Um, the needle nose are fairly nice, come to a decent point, and uh, like are fine enough, even still, after I've thrashed on them pretty well, to uh, pluck hairs out of my skin. So pretty impressive. Um, these smaller little teeth on here are very good for gripping. Haven't had any issues with that. I have occasionally used this as like a reaching tool. Like if I'm reaching for something and it's just out of reach, I will use this and just kind of give myself that extra three, four inches, you know, about a hundred millimeters or so, and just pinch onto something and pull it out. So very useful for that. Very nice long multi-tool. Um, let me prove it to you. Here's the uh, Gerber Suspension NXT, which I guess you're sp supposed to pronounce next. Um, but as you can see, the reach, yeah, look at that. A little bit longer, you know? Maybe about an inch, 25 millimeters or so. Not too bad. Um, especially compared to something like, this is the Roxxon uh, S801S Storm. This is sort of a medium duty multi-tool. Um, the Surge is basically in its own size category. I have never seen another tool this big, and um, I don't think there's anything quite like it on the market right now. Um, which is part of the reason that it's so capable. I mean, it's just a big tool. You just have a lot of ability to put torque and force on it without it giving way. So that's been super enjoyable. Really like the um, hard wire cutters. Don't use the soft wire cutters much. We can do a little test here. Uh, this is hard wire, so you push it down into the gap down there and just nip it. Um, Leatherman tools don't tend to sort of fire out the uh, snipping so you'll have to kind of like wiggle it but uh, not too bad decent snip and the little piece of copper fell off so there you have it um, there is a wire crimper down here I believe down in this um, what I would call like the crotch of the tool whoops yeah I think you can see it down here I'm not experienced uh, crimping wire and I can't say I've really used that much um, so yeah, if you've got more experience in that department, feel free to leave a comment below. All right, so that is the plier heads. Um, let me move on to the exterior tools because these are my most used uh, by far. 
Um, I'm usually a knife carrying kind of guy and this was a great multi-tool to add to my collection. The only thing I had before this was a Gerber suspension, the original version of this guy right here. The uh, tools on the original Gerber suspension just weren't really cutting it for me. So all of them are available on the outside, but you can see it's a pretty small knife blade. Um, what else do I have over here? What is this thing? I think this is the saw. Yeah, the saw, which I only use to cut, like, I think a colored pencil, which is why it's green. Um, what else you got? Oh, yeah, you have a serrated blade, which is also pretty small and not the sharpest. And then a little pair of scissors, which is really hard to access. Yeah, all these tools were pretty challenging to get to. Um, that was another thing I didn't like about this. So the transition from this guy to the Surge was fantastic and super easy and I'm glad I did it and uh, I actually got mine on eBay and I just checked how much I paid for it I paid like 74 bucks for this at auction and uh, just awesome what a steal of a deal would do it again in a heartbeat um, if you're gonna buy this new from Leatherman with the bit kit right now it's like 130 bucks which is kind of that's steep you know for a multi-tool um, so honestly, if I have to tell you any secret to the Surge, buy it secondhand. Uh, I can't imagine how much effort it would take to destroy one of these. Because I, I honestly have, have put this in situations where I'm like, this fell off a 10-foot ladder. I hope it's okay, and I pick it up, and it's completely fine. Like I said, I've cranked my life away on this thing, and it's held up just fine. So I don't know what kind of ungodly strength you need to break a Surge. Um, I think the best you could do is break the uh, wire cutters, and those are replaceable. So, yeah, look for them secondhand for sure. Sorry, this is going to be a very rambling video. All right, exterior tools. Uh, first up, the pocket clip. I got one of these as soon as I tried carrying this with the sheath, and just wasn't working for me. Now this is a heavy tool. This is like 13 ounces. I'm not sure the weight in grams. Let me grab a scale. Here's our scale. 353 grams. Woo! That's 12.45 ounces. Okay, so yeah, three quarters of a pound for uh, this guy. That's <laughs> that's some serious, serious bulk. Um, yeah, this is pretty harsh to carry in a pocket, I'm not going to lie. Um, it will beat up other stuff in your pocket. I never really cared because I usually keep tools and I have like a hard case wallet. So it doesn't bother me much, but um, you know, your mileage will vary. Consider what you have going on in your pockets if you're going to pocket carry. Also the clip will wiggle, like this is just how they're designed. Um, Leatherman clips do seem to wiggle a little bit. I have a... Uh, this is my Leatherman Kick, and this is actually a clip from the Leatherman Side Clip. Um, so not designed for this tool, but it fits pretty well, and you can still see it wiggles a little bit. So, you know, you're going to have that issue. It's never bent out, it's never broken, it just wiggles a little. Not much of a problem for me. Um, let's see here. Oh, the plain blade. Man, I have use this so extensively it has touched acid and caustic gels and all kinds of stuff and that black coating is held up beautifully um, I actually maintain the edge with one of the other tools on here which I'll show you in a second here's the scissors um, they are best accessed with the left hand um, I am fairly ambidextrous so I don't really mind that much these scissors have been pretty nice um, they're not the most precision, but they do have like a little bit of chunk and a little bit of uh, jimping on the backside here. So that's pretty nice. They're very comfortable to use in that regard. Um, they can cut your nails, you know, if you need to do nail care stuff. Uh, they won't be super accurate. Um, however, they do splay out. And then you can also sharpen these using this exact tool. I have another video about that I can link in the description. Uh, there's also the serrated blade, and these are nice long blades. These are, I think, about three and a quarter inches. Um, three and a quarter inches being, uh, well, let's see, about 90 millimeters, maybe less. 
okay, about 80, maybe 79. This is the rocks on storm. Okay, call them 80 mil. Yeah, uh, good length. Uh, haven't used it all that much. The plain blade really does the majority of my cutting. Uh, although when I have something nasty or fibrous, this comes in handy and works like a charm, you know, like a serrated blade should. Um, that is also a right-handed, right-handed tool, right? Your right thumb will deploy that. Another left-handed tool, we've got the file. Um, you can also use the saw in this configuration with this Bosch T-Shank adapter. Um, you can also get interchangeable stuff for this. Let me show you. Here's a couple examples for you. And look at that, I found the uh, saw that came with my search. So all you have to do is open up this little holder, fit it in there like that, and then make sure it's nice and flat. You can close that back up on it. And now you have a locking folding saw on there and replaceable. So if you dull it, you can get a new one for pretty cheap. Uh, I think it's like a 10 or $12 replacement and you get another saw and another file. So yeah, really enjoy that. And if you need to do multiple different types of crafts or something, you can also use anything with the Bosch T-Shank on it and put it in here. Now, I say that with a caveat, it will wiggle a little bit, right? It won't pull out, you can't pull it out. It'll wiggle just a little because these tools are real skinny. And um, further, you won't be able to close it back up because these, um, these tools are not designed to fit the Leatherman Surge. Now you could cut them off right here and make them fit if you wanted, but just so you know, you're gonna have to modify it if that's the case. But oh my God, do I love this ability to swap tools in and out. It is really fantastic. You can get all kinds of saw blades and other stuff for this. So yeah, definitely one of my favorite tools. And I always keep the file in here for the intention of sharpening my other tools using the file. Like I primarily sharpen this knife blade with the file. And the reason I do that is because this side is diamond coated. I had somebody comment and say, I can't believe they only give you a one-sided file. They said that on like a different video. And I was like, dude, the other side is a diamond coated file. Like, <laughs> do you even know what you're talking about? And um, yeah, not only that, not only is this diamond coated, there is a single cut saw right on the spine here. So you can cut into things this way and a double cut pattern on the back. Um, this does leave a pretty nice finish very easy to use. You can use it in both directions. Yeah, you can see a nice shiny copper finish. Um, it's not a perfect finish. I think you can probably see it on the knife plate a little bit better. There we go. I'll curl it back and forth. So not perfect, not like a mirror polish, but uh, definitely good enough to make this blade cut again. Uh, definitely good enough to wear down uh, other stainless steels and hardened steels. So yeah, really, really enjoy that in the uh, lab environment where I work. Um, Cause often you'll have some metal components and you're like, the fitment is just, just a little off. I'm missing just, you know, a little bit of deburring or something on a part and I'll detach my metal file and I'll have at it and smooth things over. So yeah, been super useful. Um, another kind of exterior tool I use is the uh, bottom of the handles here. You can see these are off a little bit from one another. They're not perfectly aligned like this, you know, from the factory. They're kind of cranked. Um, but like I said, I, th I think that happened when uh, I cranked super hard on it uh, a few times. So that's a pretty normal Leatherman thing. Uh, let me see. Here's my Leatherman kick. And yeah, they, these don't sit quite evenly, like quite perfectly in line with each other either. So yeah, over time the tool handles just, they just walk out a little bit. That's not a big deal. It doesn't affect the function. Uh, but I have used this as a striking surface. So like literally coming down on things, hammer blow style. Um, and uh, I think these little bolsters like do move around a bit now. They're not, yeah, there you go, you can see it. They walk around a little bit. So it's hard on the tool, uh, however, it didn't affect performance, and uh, I got done what I needed to get done, so 
no regrets really. All right, let's talk about the internal tools now. Uh, this, you can see me cranking on it using my fingernail. They are quite difficult to get out. So if the internal tool set you see here is something you need quick access to, again, try to get the stainless steel version. Or, you know, uh, I suppose you could go the Leatherman P4 route, um, but it won't be as heavy duty a tool. Um, if you need more information about that tool, drop a link in the description. I have a honestly at this point like kind of a famous video for my channel about that tool so um, we do have the Leatherman bit driver which uh, has the ability to exchange bits uh, it does come with this one standard and uh, I only have this one the small flathead or medium flathead and then the uh, two-dimensional Phillips head um, that's all I've ever really needed uh, I never bought the bit kit because I just never needed more bits so yeah, it works just fine. They wiggle just slightly, um, but as soon as you like put torque on something, they stay still. So not much of a problem. If you like the bit exchanger, you have like a wave and you need something more heavy duty, the surge is gonna do you just fine. Um, okay, let's try and get this can opener out. Ugh. All right, surge can opener. Uh, I honestly didn't have that much experience with this, so the other day I used it. Let me grab the uh, can lid. Okay, there's the lid, and here's the can. Let's turn to the surge side. I had to label them. So, what I have to say about the surge can opener is that it's kind of interesting. You, you puncture the can and then kind of push and move backwards, which is um, sort of the reverse of use the Victorinox over here. You push forwards on that one. So it kind of works the opposite of most can openers um, on other tools. However, it does work extremely well. So as you can see, there's a pretty continuous little pattern here of waves. And um, yeah, it was pretty nice to have like a big chunky handle for kind of opening the can and moving this backwards through it. And also you can see it left the best finish. Uh, I tested several tools and it really like flush cut the can. Um, and left it in really good shape. So uh, if you need a decent can opener, the uh, Surge actually works pretty well. So yeah, uh, it also has a wire stripping notch, um, although I haven't really used it. You know what, let's do it live. Um, here's that same wire from before. Just gonna like, I guess, press it into this crevice here. Uh, pretty clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. I am not electrically inclined um, something I should really add to my tool set probably or skill set rather um, just haven't gotten around to it <laughs> uh, yeah I mean oh that that worked <laughs> it definitely like pulled it off let's see if I can like oh there you go cool um, well it seemed to work well I really don't know what I'm doing and I probably cut through that way faster than I thought <laughs> So yeah, the wire stripper notch works fine. Uh, yeah, good tool, little hard to uh, fish out. So keep that in mind if you're considering purchasing one of these. This side is looser for some reason, and also all the tools clump together. So if this side worked as smoothly as this one, we wouldn't have much of a problem. All right, uh, we have a small screwdriver on here. This is just a nail nick. Um, haven't used it for much specifically. I don't encounter a lot of screws with this small head. And then there's a fairly wide, fairly thick flathead screwdriver. These might come in handy for uh, adjusting your, your pistol grips or whatever. Um, the main tool I use on this side is the awl. And this awl is pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so it is a rough stitching awl, hence the uh, hole in there for you gotta repair your tent or something, you use some coarse thread and some uh, Gore-Tex or something, you can do that sort of backwood style repair. There's no fine uh, sewing going on here. There is also um, the reamer component. So this is a flat pack side and then a very, very severe hollow grind on here. It's almost like a blood groove that comes to an edge. So I don't think you can make it out very well, but it works moving um, clockwise so like twisting this way you'll put it inside of like a pipe or whatever and you'll just like ream out any excess stuff I mean literally when you cut copper pipe um, it tends to have like raggedy 
uh, stuff on the edge. And so you take this and you scrape off the excess copper. Also works for PVC. And um, I've also used this for venting uh, cans and such. So I used to work in chemical blending. I'd have, you know, say this is a container of isopropyl alcohol. And I'm like, okay, cool. I got to get this to a customer in five minutes. How do I pour it out as fast as possible? Well, you need air exchange. So as you take the you know, pour spout off and start dumping it, you literally come over and bang, put a hole in the back. And that way air will rush in and displace, you know, um, it'll stop glugging. Like, you know how you, when you pour something into glug, 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 that glugging is big old air bubbles coming in through the spout to uh, make up for the displaced liquid pouring out of the container. So if you vent the backside, it can suck air in this way and pour the contents out seamlessly. So I used to use that all the time. So I have slam a jam this guy into a bunch of steel stuff, just like you just saw, and uh, it's held up just, just fine, just beautifully. So can't recommend it enough. Um, you cannot close these tools without the pliers being at least somewhat open. You do need to clear the plier head to get it back in. So that is one of the main drawbacks of this tool. I think honestly, if there was a way to improve it, um, I don't think you're going to be able to lighten it up any with the way that it's configured now. Um, you might be able to make it lighter using like the free P4 magnetic architecture, but um, I think the rest of the tool would kind of suffer from that a little bit. Um, mine is still pretty stiff, so that's kind of a drawback. and. Um, the black coating used to wear off a lot. I have a video, which I'll link in the description, of uh, cleaning this tool after four years of use, and you will just see how much black coating that this sheds off. So again, go for the stainless steel version. It's going to treat you better, I think. And then um, just a sort of meta discussion on why the Surge is the best tool. Um, even other tools that have outside accessible components going on, they're just not as well made. Um, I think the Surge has some of the best fit and finish of any tool I've experienced and I am rapidly adding to my collection so that I can get a better sense of what's going on in the tool world. Um, here's a Leatherman Kick. This is also a good tool but much lighter duty. Um, however, the handles fall open. So that would be nice if my Surge did that, I think. But I'll take it as is. It is such a capable tool. Um, the sort of European equivalent of the Surge is probably going to be something like the Victorinox Swiss Champ. This is another gigantic multi-tool that's fairly difficult to uh, carry and haul around, uh, but it has so much functionality going for it. So, yeah, um, if I need something non-locking that is similar in tool set to the Surge, I would probably carry something like this Swiss Champ. Uh, but having all the components lock is fantastic. I love that about the Surge. Even the internal tools, as you can tell, you can hear it lock and then you have to press this little little thing on the back side and it will shut itself. So yeah, that's the lock release. Everything's a liner lock. Um, I really love it. The, the fact that everything locks, the huge bonus of not having to carry an extra knife because I have two knife blades on here is fantastic. You can do a ton of serious cutting with this before running out of usable knife because of the two knives. Uh, you can maintain a lot of the tools using the file or if it's your preference you can have tons of different saw blades on here for whatever you're working on. So yeah, um, if you're a bit kit user and you're like, oh, I love the bit exchanger, this thing has the bit exchanger on here. It's just an all around, very, very hard working, highly capable, highly functional tool. Um, the sacrifices you make are the weight, the size, um, the black coating wears off if you get the black one. And it's just kind of large in comparison to all of its brethren, but man, you really do gain performance with the gain in size of the Surge. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, $130. Would I be willing to pay that? Uh, if I use the bit kit, yeah, probably. I think you can get them for $115, $110 without the bit kit. 
and um, yeah, I would I would definitely pay that today. I'm glad I paid 74 bucks because man, what a steal! Um, but yeah, I would easily pay uh, you know 120 bucks for this thing to be shipped to my door. Like if this thing went missing tomorrow, I'd I'd have to get another one. It's just that good. If I don't know what I'm facing that day, I'm grabbing the surge, and that's just what it comes down to. Um, if you're wondering what I carry with the Surge, Nipex pliers. I'm going to link that video in the description as well. This right here is so much EDC capability, it's bonkers. So yeah, there you have it. That's the Surge review. I didn't know I was going to do it. Um, I've talked about the Surge in other videos, as you can tell by the links below. Um, but yeah, just nothing beats it. It's the undisputed king of multi-tools. Um, it's so big, so capable, has so many different, like, replaceable components. Like, if you break a bit or something, you just get new bits. If you break the plier jaws, you just get new cutters in here. Um, it's really fantastic and comes with Leatherman's 25-year warranty. So, yeah, the Leatherman Surge, it doesn't get any better than this right now. However, and here we are, we're at that special moment where I'm going to tell you about a different tool. That I'm really looking forward to. Uh, it's called the GOAT, stands for Gentlemen of All Trades. Now let it be known that I think that that's a stupid name. Um, I don't think you need to gender tools. Capability and functionality is not a masculine thing, okay? Your, your dick and balls don't have to be involved in everything, okay? So the Gentlemen of All Trades is a multi-tool that's available or was available on Kickstarter was successfully funded um, pretty expensive however it's gonna be a totally modular platform so I'm basically hoping to recreate a lot of the functionality of my surge using the goat multi-tool uh, I'll put a link in the description to the Kickstarter just so you can like see what it is because it's gonna be so awesome I I think um, I was super stoked about the Leatherman Free P4, and that turned out to be kind of a mediocre tool. So let's hope that the GOAT is the greatest of all time tool, which is how I'm going to refer to it, because um, I don't care what you call things, I'm going to call them whatever the hell I want to. Um, yeah, but I'm really hoping to recreate, because like I don't need the serrated blade if I have a plain edge blade. I'm a good enough hand sharpener that I don't need that. Um, those two flathead drivers, I never use them. I already have a bit exchanger. Why do I need two flathead drivers? That doesn't make any sense to me. So I think there's room for improvement on the Leatherman Surge, and I'm hoping that the GOAT is the way to go. So you'll be seeing that this summer. Just thought I'd let you know in the Surge video because, uh, yeah, this is my favorite tool, and um, it is currently uh, got some competition. I hope, I really, really hope. If I can find a better tool than the Leatherman Surge, y'all will be the first to know for sure. All right, there you have it, Leatherman Surge Review. I've been Joe, you've been watching Ink and Iron. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more multi-tool videos, you wanna see my EDC stuff, all that kind of gear and everyday carry junk, uh, I've got it in spades. So please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't like it, and tell me why in the comments. I'm not looking to make crappy videos forever. All right, thanks, have a good one. Catch you on the next video, bye.